Hey guys, I'm here today with the new X NDD7. They call this the Take Echo emulator, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. First off, I paid for this with my own money, so I can complain as much as I want about things I don't like, and I'll get those two things out of the way really quick. The first thing is, this does not have stereo in. It only has mono in, but it does have stereo out. I'm not sure if that's something they can fix in a firmware update. It may have TRS in, and we just don't know it yet. The other issue is I've had some firmware instability, but yeah, they just released a new firmware that added MIDI syncing and almost all of my instability has been with MIDI syncing and me like pounding the heck out of sending it different tempos and program changes. Rebooting the pedal has fixed it. I've not had any issues as of yet with just using it non-mini synced, but yeah, just something to be aware of. The new firmware also added the ability to change the other problem I initially had with it, and that was to change where the reverb sits. Now you can have the reverb go into the delay, the delay A go right into the reverb, or the uh, reverb to sit in parallel with the delay. That is fantastic. That's something that the RE2 and 202 don't offer from Boss, that is. I'm gonna get this out of the way now, I would say, unless you need stereo I.O., that you get the new X NDD7 and save yourself some money and get a better pedal. Get it from Amazon. That way, if you don't like it or have problems with it or whatever, you can just return it to Amazon. It's uh, Make sure it's fulfilled by them and you'll have no problems. Not that I like Amazon or anything, but at least if you need to return something, it's pretty much hassle-free. I don't think you will because this thing is awesome. Initially when this thing was first shown off, I was kind of iffy because it showed that it had 3.5 millimeter MIDI and indeed it does, but luckily you get the adapters in the box. That's something you can't say for a lot of manufacturers these days. It also has USB-C to firmware update and control the full pedal. I'll have pictures of the uh, control software and the firmware updates are easy. I had no problems with Mac OS. It does not come with a power supply, however, that's pretty common. I think it needs like 150 milliamps uh, and 9 volts um, center negative, like a standard pedal. So 150 isn't too bad for the current draw, but just be aware of that. So this thing is kind of a game changer after they changed the um, algorithm to support um, delay into reverb, because you can get some really good ambient sounds out of it, and you'll hear that in a bit. I've swapped over to using... This noise pad, which is lovely. I have turned off MIDI syncing by just unplugging MIDI. In the opening video, you saw me MIDI syncing this, and it works pretty well unless you change a lot of tempo settings and change, um, send it a bunch of program uh, change data. It seems to not like that and glitch out. A power cycle fixed that for me, but just be aware of that. This isn't going to be super in-depth, but I'm just going to go over what the things I like. Let's go over the one other thing I don't like, and that's the looper. It's, it's a looper. It works. It works just fine. You turn on your effect so you can actually use the effect in the looper chain. You, um, I already have something in there. You can overdub. It sits behind the effects chain so you don't have the ability to put it before. I wish you could route it before the effects chain, but it doesn't have anything massively cool like the El Capistan or the, uh, what is it, the Volante. Why couldn't I think of that name? Um, yeah, so where you can have the loops decay, I wish it had that functionality. New X, I'm sending this video over to you guys. Maybe you can add a decaying looper control and you can change the routing ability possibly, pre and post effects or something like that. It's a one button looper, super easy to use. Double click to turn it off, press these, go back into normal. That's about as much as I'm gonna say about the looper. It's boring, it's serviceable. It's more than you get with the Boss RE2 or the 202. I should say that this thing was only 180 bucks, so that makes it just even more amazing for what you get. They could have, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything. It's, it's 180 bucks, it's fantastic. That is the price point that it's gonna make it so accessible for people. Let's go over the more ambient side of this because the reverb actually sounds really good. So I'm gonna switch this. I'm gonna switch all the heads off here. All the heads are now like um, lifted. With all the heads lifted, you can just hear the reverb. So that's the function why it has the heads lifted. I mean, I guess you could turn down the level, but it's kind of a metallic 
sounding reverb, but it's not bad. And what makes it cool now that with the firmware update came out, I can pipe the um, repeats into it now. So let's use the last head. Listen to how that wow and flutter just dies out. Oh, here's one other thing I'm gonna say. The um, the reverb uh, trails are turned on, or I mean, I'm, the effects trails are turned on at all times. You don't have the ability just to kill it when you turn it off. I wish there was some function to kill uh, the effect as soon as you turned it off, like turn off trails. There is not. There is a kill dry function. A lot of people ask me, can this go fully wet? Yes, it can. You just use the kill dry in the menu. We'll go over the menu in a second. But yeah, listen to that wow and flutter. It's absolutely gorgeous. And here's the really cool part about it. So I'm gonna go into the menu. You hold down the switch here. And you have kill drives the first. You have the routing for the reverb with the firmware update. Um, yeah, I, I've been through the menu, so it's not actually in order, but here's What's really cool, you have wow, obviously, but it's a separate setting from flutter. You can turn it all the way up, and that's the slower of the modulation, the up and down seasick kind of thing. Now, and then now we can do the flutter by itself. And that's the faster. We're definitely getting some generation loss vibes here. Put that all the way up. Really unique you have those as two separate controls. That's cool. That's absolutely cool. I keep them under around 40 each. I usually keep the at around 30 each and it just sounds lovely. Sometimes I go a little crazy. without the reverb. You also have bass and treble controls for the repeats. That's uh, really evident. Um, let me switch over to times here. And I will tap in a really long time. Um, so you can only go up to 550 milliseconds, I think, if you use the time control, but you can go to close to 1.6 seconds with tap tempo. We'll just get something nice and long in there. Uh, we'll go into the last head. So subdivisions are controlled by where the head is. If you use tap. That's no reverb, but listen to how smeary those repeats are and how, how beautiful they sound. Especially with that wow and flutter emulation, it's gorgeous. I will say the wow and flutter sounds miles above what Boss gives you with the RE2 and it's a true extension from what I've heard with the 202. I have the repeats quite up there, but yeah, you get the idea. All right, so I'm gonna engage all the heads. It's one of the things I like to use. The repeats get a little quieter. This will self-oscillate. It has a function, here I'll turn it on, where you can even hold down the foot switch to make it self-oscillate. Yeah, uh, what do they call it? They call it feedback engage, turn that on, so. again but yeah so it will self-oscillate that's cool um let's do that let's turn that back off but yeah 
So we'll go to the, um, the equalization. This only controls the equalization of the uh, repeats. So if you want brighter repeats. Really evident when you have both heads enabled. So it makes those repeats a lot louder and brighter. There's no age control for the tape. Interesting thing, when they uh, updated the firmware recently, which I highly recommend you do because you get the routing option and MIDI sync ability. Uh, but there is an age control in MIDI functions. It's just nowhere in the software or the menu. So if I send this MIDI information over that channel, by the way, all the channels are fully like programmable. You can set what channel you want to be whatever MIDI function you want. You do have to do that through the software. Software is really nice. Here's a picture of it. It's very well polished. But um, yeah, it has an age control for the tape. You can kind of get away with that with just equalization, but it's nowhere in the menu or the software. It's only via MIDI. And it only showed up recently. Maybe it's in beta right now or something. Maybe they forgot to put it in the menu. I haven't tried it yet. I will probably do a follow-up where I try it using like the Novation Launchpad, where I try to send it MIDI over that channel and see what the hell happens. So yeah, as you can hear, this thing is absolutely beautiful for ambient soundscapes, even by itself. I haven't added anything to this. I just, I don't feel you really need to. I would still like adding a really nice reverb at the end of it, even though the reverb's pretty good. Now with that reverb being able to control it or set it to be after the delay, it makes for these washes that are just gorgeous, especially when you have all the heads enabled. dull the repeats with the equalization a little bit. Also listen to that stereo image. Without the reverb on and with the reverb on, you get a stereo image. At least I think that's part of the modulation. Oh yeah, let's listen to the saturation. So this has saturation. That's kind of cool. It's like a little overdrive, but it's only for the repeats. Oops, the menu is a little painful to use, but it's not bad. It's it really fuzzy. Add some reverb to that. It's one knob reverb. Kind of sets the intensity and the decay time. That's with the saturation almost all the way up. Sounds really good. That's actually with the saturation up. But yeah, so that's cool. Has saturation. So yeah, that's gorgeous. Did I mention that this thing's only $180? I mean, yeah, that's pricey for a budget pedal, but with everything it does, especially with how polished the software is, the fact that NewX is firmware updating it, because they put a few of firmware updates out already, one of which uh, addressed my gripe about not having configurable reverb, um, I did put up a review on Reddit when I first got this pedal, like almost um, three, four weeks ago. And I said that that was my only gripe. I wonder if they read that. And they're like, hey, I mean, I doubt it, but it was one of the biggest uh, threads on the um, guitar pedal subreddit. So maybe, maybe they saw it, maybe SEO of that, like hit, uh, their social media team and they saw that review and he went to the engineers and said hey maybe we can do this that'd be pretty cool i mean i'm not going to toot my own horn if that was the case but we have the function i really wanted which is reverb or delay into reverb and yeah 
I'm just rambling now, but it, it's lovely. And... speaks for itself so yeah other than a little bit of midi syncing bugs that i had in the latest firmware which i think it's because it is the it's a function they just added to it it was the midi tempo sync which does work but um just be aware it can be a little unstable with the latest firmware when it comes to midi syncing Without MIDI syncing, I've not had any stability bugs. I did have a bug with tap tempo. If you tapped in full 1600 milliseconds originally, that the last head would actually be like one millisecond. They fixed that in the latest firmware. The way they fix that is you can't tap in 1600 anymore. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a cop out, but it works. I think the maximum is like 1590 now. It's still, it's 1600 in my opinion. So yeah, is this right for you? Do you like tape delay? Then yes, absolutely. Uh, it isn't stereo through. It does make a stereo image. So if it's the first in your effects chain out of the uh, pedals that you have um, that are mono, it will create a stereo image. It won't pass the stereo image, obviously, because it doesn't have stereo input. That's the only unfortunate part. Um, the fact you can't turn off effects trails in the menu somewhere when you turn off the effect is a minor gripe, but it's there. The uh, new X NDD6, which is the duo time, which is also a favorite of mine, um, it has the same thing. The There's no way of turning off the trails. I wish there was, but it just is what it is. Uh, maybe they can put that in the firmware update. Again, it's firmware updatable. That's the great part. This thing isn't. The RE2, you get what you get out of the box. It's just there. You're, you're stuck with it. You're stuck with the... I feel mediocre sounding reverb. You can't set where the reverb sets. It doesn't create a stereo image. It is stereo through. It It's also like almost 300 bucks. It's like $279 now. I didn't pay that. I think I paid and spent 260 on it. Still, this is very disappointing for the price point. Um, Boss needs to really reevaluate. Yeah, the wild and flutter doesn't sound nearly as good on the RE2. It sounds fantastic on the... Uh, the NDD7 here. It's just wonderful. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody out. I know there's not a lot of videos of it. There aren't especially a lot of videos of hearing this on a synth. So, yeah. I will say just get it through a known retailer. So if something is wrong with your unit, which I doubt there is, or if you don't like it, you can get your money back. I don't want to be the guy who said, hey, go get this, and then something, you don't like it. But, yeah. All right. 